Edna's all right? Edna's doing fine. Edna's, we, we kind of, we, we, we're working today. Uh, okay. Yeah, but uh, what we're doing is we're kind of trimming up. Uh, we're finishing up, doing a little stuff around the house. Uh-huh. And, uh, uh, you know, because it's getting to be football season. And Edna don't work much during football season. Yeah, she comes out of the woods. You tell everybody, everybody that Edna's a foremost pulpwood cutter in the world. But most certainly. I mean, she can even cut pulpwood with two hands. <laughs> uh, chainsaw on each hand. I got it. Pretty good size old girl, you know. She's gained a few pounds. Has she gained yeah, some weight? Yeah, she, uh, she feels this about 285 now. Oh, she had put on a few pounds yeah. since I saw her, yeah. Yeah, but I'm going to tell you, she still turns me on, Lord. Does she really? She's come out of that wood sometimes and she'll be just shining and glistening with all that sweat <laughs> Man, I can't hardly stand it. <laughs> I'm telling you. Shining and glistening. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, does something to you, to your energy, you know. Yeah, she's a good old girl, and she does love her football. She does. My yeah, goodness, yeah, does man, she? A, I said, Edna, uh, you know, she, she all up and went over yonder to Georgia the other day. I didn't get to go. Yeah. And she went over there, and I swear, Lord, she went to the ball game, and she come back home, and she didn't even get locked up or didn't even get in a fight. Well, maybe her conduct's better than it used to be. Well, I don't know. I don't know if it's her conduct or her age or how hard she's worked. You think she's just mellowing? I don't yeah. I don't know. It's just kind of hard to tell. Every now and then I'll say something to her and she'll haul off and just, you know, I have to do it. Yeah. And so I don't think she's mellowing much, at least not towards me. <laughs> well, she may need to feel like she's still got you to raise. Well, I know. You know, but I spent so much time, you know, with the, with, since I got into, into the cellular phone business. Mm -hmm. And got, you know, and the, with this stuff just growing, just beat the band, man. Oh, that's good. Man, just everybody, everybody's wanting a cellular phone. Uh-huh. And, uh. <laughs> So I'm just selling the hand out of them things, and Edna, she's been working and just all summer, and it's just, uh, we just been busy, busy, it's just, it's, it's, you, you name it. Well, that's, well, it's just prosperity. Yeah, yeah. yeah and yeah. I sure am glad Rufus and Jabbo didn't hear that, that letter that man wrote. No. Because uh, they'd be wanting, they, they, you know, they, they, they would just get all been out of shape. See, I, I'm, I do them pretty good. You know, I, I furnish them health insurance, and as long as they help me, it don't cost them nothing. Uh-huh. And if they get sick, then they're the one got to pay. Yeah, but not only that, but Edna, Edna is right on top of that situation. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. She don't take no, she don't take no slack off no, of them. No, because she, work, she outworks any two of them. She does. Yeah. She does that sure enough. Good old girl. Got him. Yeah, I got him a, a 9031T retirement fund, too. I have you now. Yeah. Oh, all right. But that's one of them government funds. Yeah, you know? yeah. When they contribute $903 to it, I put in one. Uh-huh. <laughs> and that way they save $904. There you go. <laughs> there you go. But, I mean, you know, their money's mounting up. You know, they got, uh, I don't know how much they got in the, in the, in the foreign, you know. But it does mount. But it does go, so Yeah, well. yeah. <laughs> so your life is all in order, and you're sitting back waiting. Just, just waiting on, just waiting on football. On football season, yeah. 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 And uh, I just can't wait. I just, um, uh, I can't wait. Well, i tell you what I really, what I really want to do. What's I really want to go down to the, really want to go down to Florida. You know, to the to the Georgia Florida game this year. Well, of course. And uh, and I guess I guess that I don't you know I don't keep much up with that stuff. Edna's the one that stays on top. Yeah, of Edna's it. the fan in the yeah. Car. Yeah. And uh, we we load up the load, load truck. The one that's got the sleeper in it. Mm-hmm. And uh, I do all the driving because Edna does all the drinking. Mm-hmm. And so I have to do all the driving. And so you know we you went with us a couple of times. You went over to Auburn with us that time. Yeah. Yeah, it was scary going yeah. there. <laughs> you so see, good. Edna's a wonderful woman, and you know how much I love Edna. Yeah. But Edna will explode in a heartbeat. Man, when you start messing with the dogs, you know, she, and start talking about them, you know, she just gets all bent out of shape. You remember that? You remember that time? Yeah, that was nice for Edna. Oh, Lord. You remember that time in Jacksonville when the policeman was on a horse? Yeah, back that horse's butt right up in Edna's face. And she took his little horse away she from sure him. Did. Sure did. That cop didn't know which <laughs> he didn't know which way to go. Sure enough, but Edna yes. don't put up with no food. No, she's not. She's not your average football fan. No. She is a. She is a life or death. Yeah, she's a, she's like one of them rabies fans, you know. Uh, one of these what? One of them rabies fans. Rabies fans. Yeah. <laughs> oh, a rabbit fan. Yeah, that's what. That's the word I was looking for. Well, you, lo <laughs> you, lo you lost me there. <laughs> I knew it was something to do. Something to do. It didn't sound it, but I didn't know exactly what it was. Something to do with being really, really mad. Yeah. Yeah, sure enough. But Edna do get bent out of shape, sure enough. She does. Let, well, let me ask you another question. Ask me another question. Uh, Edna was very upset about that baseball strike a few years ago. Oh, and, yeah. And boycotted. Is she still boycotting? She will not go to, she will not go to a Braves game. I'll say one thing. Old girl got a long memory, hasn't she? Yeah, she sure has. <laughs> she can pull things up. Happened to us 35 years ago today. I ain't thought about it in, in, in <laughs> 
31 years. Well, and uh, also I need to point out that she was a tremendous Major League Baseball fan. She's the only person I ever know, true story, yeah. who got tennis elbow from doing the tomahawk no, chop. No, she got, she got, she got uh, tomahawk boob. Oh, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> it affected one of her boobs. <laughs> she thought there was something serious wrong with her. That may be all I need to know about that. <laughs> but she had that old tomahawk, you know. She was, she had what, that, that, one of the bars made her a wooden tomahawk. Uh-huh. And it, it, it's red. Uh -huh. It's got the braids and Sydney on it. And that thing must weigh a pound and a half, I guess. And she get in there in front of that TV set, sitting in that recliner, and she just slinging that thing back and forth, back and forth, doing that, doing that, Oh, yeah, yeah. like that kind of stuff, you know. Oh. And she got to hurt, and she went to the doctor. You know, it ain't much going to the doctor. No. And uh, as much as she does out in the woods, she does, you know, for her to get a get a sore muscle or something like that, you know, it, it just don't hurt her. Yeah, absolutely. And so she thought something serious wrong with her. And went to the doctor. Too much. That's, that's what come to find out what it was. Too much tomahawk. Yeah, Listen, too much tomahawk. I'm out of time, but with the football season here, I expect to hear from you and Edna both a lot. I expect you probably will. All right, well, buddy. The business is, the business is going to be going downhill after this. You take, <laughs> you take care of it. Go hug her. Uh, remember one thing, would you? What's that? You got a friend in the pub with business. So we'll see y'all. Take care. Goodbye. Bye-bye. 1-800-572-8255. Edna is a piece of work in this world. More conversation right after this. Well, I hope by now you got big plans for a summer vacation, and I hope you're going to let my friends at Value Jet make this the best vacation of your life. Going to Florida, Fort Walton Beach, Jacksonville, Orlando, Tampa, Fort Lauderdale, West Palm, or Fort Myers, you make sure you go with Value Jet. Take the whole family with you, the best vacation of your life, and you're going to save big money with my buddies at Value Jet. Don't forget the low fares every day, everywhere they fly. Vacation time, gang. I found seekers in Ludlow Porch with a question for you. Are you going to be too busy to cook tonight? Let folks do it for you, because the good-to-go chicken dinner includes everything you need. Blue ribbon fried chicken, southern-style vegetables, homemade biscuits, and our world-famous iced tea. Now, with 17 Metro Atlanta locations, that means there's one near you. So when you think about a good southern dinner, you think about my friends at Folks. Hi, gang. This is Ludlow Porch, and I need to tell you about my new friends at Autosave Car Rentals. Their name tells the whole story. Autosave. Autosave. They can save you in so many ways. Let me tell you about a few. First, they save you when you need a car, truck, or van at a minute's notice. Second, they save you with cash rentals and unlimited mileage. So, if you or someone you know under 21 years of age, they can save you because Autosave rents to under 21 folks. They're locally owned and operated with locations all over Atlanta. Open six days a week to serve you, and if you need them to, they'll come to your house and pick you up. I want you to mention the Ludlow Porch discount, and you save another 10% on daily or weekly rentals. Auto save. Look for them in the yellow pages. They're all over town. I really love these guys. Auto save. The name tells the whole story. You call them when you need a car. of a good part of our conversation today has been this letter I got a couple of days ago that I saved for Labor Day. And just let me read it to you quickly again because some of you out there calling and saying you didn't get to hear it. And so you don't know whether you agree or disagree. Dear Ludlow, we are celebrating Labor Day the wrong way. We should be working and working for no pay. Let me explain. What better way and what better day to show our employers that we appreciate what they have done to create jobs for us. Sometimes we forget how precious our jobs are and the personal sacrifices that our bosses have made and continue to make. We whine all year about working conditions and bosses. Let's show them we appreciate what they've done for us and give this day to them. Labor Day should be a day to honor business in America and just say thank you. The slogan should be, no pay on Labor Day. See what your listeners think. And it's signed from a listener in Gadsden, Alabama. If you want to comment about it, there it is. Let's go to Lowndes County and talk to Aubrey on the radio. Hello, Aubrey. Good morning, 
in Ludlow. I did call Friday, but I got on. I got. I called too late, and I didn't get caught with you. Okay. Well, we're cool today. Yeah. And how was your weekend? Great. And what'd you do this weekend? Well, we had some friends up to the house from Virginia, and we just kind of visited and went over to the Apple Country in L.J. and had a big time. Okay. Well, that sounds good. Uh. Anyway, I wanted to make a comment about that letter. All right. Um. I don't agree with it. Um. I don't think the um, bosses should be treated as they're any more important than the workers because if they didn't have the workers in the first place, they couldn't run their businesses. Well, but then we get into the chicken and egg thing. <laughs> if, they did, if they didn't have the business, it wouldn't be a place for them to work either. Well, I mean, you know, the, the old saying about it takes all the cogs in the wheel to make the wheel turn. Absolutely. So I, I don't, I think that's belittling the uh, worker saying that the boss is more important because... Oh, I, no, I, I didn't read it that way, Aubrey. Well, I mean, if, you, if you're saying the boss is more important, well, see, now if the boss didn't have all the workers in the first place, then the boss couldn't get the business done in the first place. <laughs> okay. Do you understand that one? I understand what you say. I just don't agree with it. I understand. Uh, I, and I don't think that indicates that... The, if I read the letter right, I don't think it indicates that we think he's any better than we are. We just want to say thank you. Well, that's true, but... But then we all got to work and make a living somehow or the other. If there's a place. And and, and and I also think about it this way. If he didn't hire us or he or she didn't hire us, we could go in competition with him or her and could possibly put him or her out of business. So, <laughs> boy, that's a stretch. <laughs> but anyway, I did, I did finally pick up the ticket to see you in Moultrie. Oh, good. I, look I, got, a, I got a friend that lives close to Moultrie, and I told her about it, and so she's probably going to go meet you, too. Well, that's good. I look forward to that. We'll have a good time, I promise. I'll talk to you later. All right, buddy. Thanks for the call. Bye. Bye-bye. 1-800-572-8255 as we go, to, we go to Clarksville and talk to my friend Roger. Hello, Roger. Good morning, sir. How are you? I'm trying to break a bad habit I picked up of uh, choosing the wrong category when you ask questions. <laughs> this is a quick World War II story, if I may. All right, sure. Uh, we had two publications over there. There was Sad Sack, uh, there was um, Stars and Stripes and Yank. Mm -hmm. And one of them had this cartoon character, Sad Sack. Yeah. But one of the fellows over there submitted his name, one of these people that do genealogical searches. And it turns out that Sad Sack had a very distinguished uh, genealogy. They said that the name was originally spelled S-A-C-H. And the word, the first name Saad, the way they pronounce it over there, was also a common name. Anyway, he was through the Austro-Hungarian Empire, clear back to the Crusades. Now, what do you think of that? <laughs> Sam, somehow, I never, I never thought of Sad Sack as having any kind of ancestry at all. <laughs> <laughs> but he proved it over there. Well, you know what he did? He, he brought a lot of smiles to a lot of tired, hungry, scared GIs. Yes, he did. Yeah. I didn't want to call when, when you had that lady guest, because I didn't want her to think I was running down her... That's all a very distinguished line of work. Here, here. May I make a quick reference? I just recently bought a, a video of Louis Grizzard. I mentioned this because I was reminded by the thing that happened with uh, Princess Diane. Yeah, yeah. The good time much to you. Amen. Glad you called, old friend. Thank you for your time. You take care of yourself. Always phone when you call. 1-800-572-8255 is our number on this Labor Day, and a beautiful day it is. I mean, the sun is shining and bright. Maybe a little hot this afternoon, but uh, these hot days are going to start to wane as we uh, uh, as we ease on into September. So uh, if you're a hot weather person, and a lot of you are, enjoy, because they're almost gone. Myself, I'm waiting for my first 30-degree night. I love it. Our number, 1-800-572-8255. Don't have quite enough time to give anybody a, a fair shot at this, so we're going to take care of some business at the bottom of the hour, and then we'll get right back with some more a telephone conversation because it truly is a great day to be alive. A lot of interest in this letter. I know what interested in doing it, just interested in talking about it. And that's all we wanted to do here, just talk about it. 1-800-572-8255. We invite you to join us. Bomb of a 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 bomb of
from our trip to Cleveland. All right. Friday. Safe and sound. Yeah, we had a pretty good time, though. We stayed until yesterday. Good. And uh, we had barbecue, and we got to eat at the Smith House. Oh. And by one of those apple places where you were Saturday. Yeah. <laughs> I found that out. And uh, we had a pretty good time, but we made it back safe and sound. Well, that's good. That's I got good. a picture of, of uh, Sophie. Oh, yeah. yeah, I mean, you know, that's that's a that's a prize. <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> hang on to that. I, I'm going to hang on to it when I get it developed. All right, what else is going on? Well, I got your book, one of them. Uh, I've got a bunch of your books, but this particular one I didn't have, and started reading on the way home. And I mean, while we were there, not on the way home. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, guess what we listened to on the way home? What? Rendezvous. Can you believe that? <laughs> Funny man. I mean, you're talking about devotion. I am truly devoted to this crazy bunch of people. I promise you are. <laughs> I want to ask you a couple of uh, trivia. All right. Why do we say o'clock when you give the time and you say 12 o'clock? Mm-hmm. I think that means 12 by the clock. Well, I, I was at telling Charlie this morning, I thought it meant uh, 12 on the clock, and it was short for on the clock. Well, that could be. I just, I mean, I thought you had all the answers. <laughs> no, but I got a book that's got that in it. I will, uh... Uh, I'll bring that in one day. Okay. And another one. You say the bottom of the hour, and it's the half of the hour. Why do you say the bottom? It's well, not the bottom. I, I'm, sure, <laughs> I, I'm sure that that is something that, uh, uh, that, that we got from radio. Uh, when that big hand, when the big hand is on, uh, uh, Phil says, oh, all clocks are Irish. <laughs> bottom of the hour. <laughs> I'm sure that's something we got from radio. Bottom yeah, of the hour. Well, I figured it was. Some, somebody sitting watching that big clock on the wall, as they used to say. Yeah, I feel by the old clock on the wall is the dead fly. Yeah. You remember that one? Yeah. <laughs> you know, we, uh, yeah, a, a lot of things that I've, I've really enjoyed this book. I've, I've got a great book that I've been rereading and rereading. And I'll bring it in one day because it's yeah, got all these kind of things in it. That sounds like fun. I got to see Jennifer, too. The I lovely, got to go the, by and see her play. The lovely Jennifer. Well, that's yeah, good. she's going to be moving. And, uh, no, I don't mean she's not going to be leaving anywhere. She's, they're going to be moving their business. Uh, oh, well, all They're right. kind of out in the boondocks right now, but they're going to be moving it more into, the, into town. So, well, uh, you were in the midst of some of the nicest people. Oh, yeah. I've ever, these are just tremendous people. Yeah, they really are. We had one person to draw a map for us to show us how to get to Doug's place, uh -huh. and it was backwards. took us an hour to find it. Well, but <laughs> I think it's kind of appropriate. Doug is a little backwards. Well, yeah, yeah. yeah you could say that. Yes, I need to get out of here. All righty. Well, you have a good day, and I'll be talking to you later. You be sweet now. You too. Bye-bye. 1-800-572-8255 is our number as we talk to probably the, the nation's only full-time uh, radio philosopher, Norman Clatcher. Norman! <laughs> <laughs> How you doing, Lewis? I'm doing good. How's the old philosophy oh, business? the philosophy business is right well. Well, that's good. Sure is. You know, I've really been into, into, into uh, kind of full-time uh, pig breeding now. Yeah, you yeah. kind of backed off from the philosophy? Yeah, well, I still do a little philosophizing, but uh, uh, the, the pig breeding's taking up most all my time. Uh-huh. Well, it's, it's, it's kind of kind of hard to, to do philosophy in the summertime. It really is. You know, you got to have a fireplace, yeah. you got to be cold, and yeah. you got to have a shawl and a hat. And a, Atmosphere's yeah, everything. It sure is. Philosophy. It sure is. But, uh, yeah, I, that's, that's been spending all my... Hey, you know what I'm going to do? What? I done put me in a... This is a kind of a commercial, but you, you do these folks as commercials, so I'm going to say something about it. All right. I done got me a, a order in for one of these brand new Dodge pickup trucks. Oh, good. I told Blue about it, and I'm telling you what's the truth. He's just tickled, just tickled beyond words. Yeah, he's a happy little pig. He sure is. Uh-huh. You know, this thing got four doors in it. Yeah, oh, yeah. And <laughs> you counted them, didn't you? Sure did. You know, when you look at it, it don't look like it's just got regular two doors, you uh -huh. know. But, you know, you know, the other folks have got one of them uh, 
uh, you know, the uh, Chevrolet and the, and the Ford got one that got a third door. Yeah. And Dodge has done done one butter. Now, they got four doors. All right. Good truck. I drove one for about two weeks when they first came out. Really, really, really like driving a car. Yeah, I know it. But I, I've been saving up all my breeding money. So I, I'm fixing to buy them in truck. Okay, well, that's good. I got a little philosophy you got time to hear. Yeah, let's, let's, let, let me check see if Maurice is here. Maurice, are you here? Ma Maurice has been waiting <laughs> and waiting. Yeah, I bet he has. Go to it. Uh, you know, junk something you hung on to for 15 years and then sold it in the yard sale the day before you needed it. <laughs> And the hardest, the hardest kind of money to make is enough. <laughs> Very good. Never milk a cow in a thunderstorm, or you could be left holding the bag. <laughs> Funny. <laughs> yeah, anybody can get old. All you got to do is live long enough. <laughs> and the only time the average child is good as gold on April the fifteenth. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> Maurice, I think Maurice like him too. Uh, college takes a lot of dough, and some people still come out half baked. <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> Maurice in pretty good form. Yeah, it sounds like. Yeah. The very day that you'd sell your soul for nothing, there won't be a demand for it. <laughs> and it's a sign of a superior mind to disagree without being disagreeable. Ooh, good for you. And I never know how much of what I say is the truth. <laughs> I knew you'd like oh, that. That's wonderful. That could be the title of your next book. Yeah. It'd be nice to everybody eliminates the need to make a decision. Ooh. Deep. Deep. Uh, happiness is good health with a bad memory. <laughs> <laughs> the federal government's got three answers to everything. Tax it, control it, or fund it. Oh, hey. Beautiful. That's a campaign slogan. I need a big finish. I got two little big finishers. Okay, here. two little big finishers. Yeah. All right, here you go. Uh, there are two things wrong with lawyer jokes. Lawyers don't think they're funny, and we don't think they're jokes. <laughs> Very good. And here's the other half of Have you ever wondered what the hookers do on their night off? <laughs> here we go. Maurice, <laughs> Maurice now, loves it. It's been an absolute pure pleasure on my part. I want to assure you the pleasure has been entirely ours. Oh, that's true value. That's true value indeed. Norman Glacier. <laughs> I don't remember it being that long to you. <laughs> <laughs> Good day. Good day, Solomon. One eight hundred five seven two eight two five five. We'll be right back. Hop on Seekers Ludlow Porch. My buddy's at the Blue Willow Inn. Listen, when you get ready for that special meal, you think of the Blue Willow Inn. Superb Southern food, beautiful surroundings and service like you've always dreamed of having. Fried chicken, fried steak, if it's southern, they make it, and they make it better than anybody else. The Blue Willow Inn. You stop by and tell them Ludlow Fort sent you. Oh, you want to know where it is? It's in Social Circle, Georgia. Where else would it be? I want to talk to you about my buddies at Taylor Construction Company. This is a family-owned company, and they've been installing and selling vinyl siding for over 28 years. Good people, all you have to do is give them a call and then never, ever paint again. I want you to call them at 770-587-3454. That's 770-587-3454. These are the people you can trust. These are the people at Taylor Construction. It's that time, gang. Back to school time, and that means back to school clothing, and we all know there's only one name for all your back to school shopping, and that's J&R Clothing. They have names like Lee... Levi, Calvin Klein, just to name a few. Great selection of denim jeans and shorts and a huge selection of husky sizes for those hard-to-fit kids. Hey, you're going to save at least 30% every day. That's 30%. And right now, 
you get a free logo t-shirt with the purchase of two denim items and their layaway program it's available right now you remember this for your back to school shopping it's j and r clothing two locations georgia highway 85 south at the clayton fayette county line and in douglasville on highway 5 and stewart parkway j and r clothing your one stop for all your back to school clothes mama daddy all the children j and r clothing you go by there, and when you get in the door, you tell them a Ludlow Ford sent you. All right. Let's go to uh, Dalton, Georgia, and talk to W.L. W.L., welcome. How you doing? How you doing, hello? Doing good, uh, buddy. It's been a while. I talked to you d during the week of the 4th. I talked to you a little while and told you how I enjoyed your show. And I didn't know where you were going to be on today or not. It being Labor Day, I figured you'd be over at uh, the uh, L.J. Uh, getting some barbecue over there at uh, one of them other places. That ain't the worst idea I've ever heard. <laughs> Uh, but like I said, I didn't know. I'd come in, and, and uh, I've been kind of doing some stuff outside, and I come in, I said, I told my wife, I said, I wonder if my program's on. And I come in here and turn the radio on, and you was on. I, said, hey, I didn't know you was going to be on today. Atta boy, we're glad you're with us. And uh, another thing, you talk about uh, iced tea quite a bit. That's what I drank quite a bit. Uh -huh, me too. And I mean, I love it. You're around. Now, uh, and I know you're about out of time, and like I said, I do enjoy your program. I don't get talked to you like the other people I, that I listen to. There's several in Dalton that I hear talk, you know, call in, you know. Yeah. Stuff, you know? Uh, where, is, where is some of your books uh, in some bookstores? Now, we've got several big bookstores here in Dalton. Uh, would they be in them, or would they have to go to... Uh, Atlanta or something. No, call them. They, they should be scattered all around. Call them and ask them if they got any. That's the best way to do it, or if they can get them for you. Okay. Uh, my wife reads quite a bit, and uh, when uh, I heard about you had had some books, a lot of them been talking about, I got thinking, well, I need to see if I can find some. Maybe let her read them. All right. Good for you. And, uh, Ludlow, again, you have a good, safe uh, 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 Labor Day holiday, and you and... Uh, uh, who's your co-worker there? Well, Denny and Phil, Denny yeah. And them. yeah. Tell them that I said hello and hope they had a safe trip and safe uh, holiday and maybe not eat too much. All right, buddy. I'm glad you called. Take care of yourself. Right, talk to you later. Bye-bye. Value Jet Airlines, gang. Low fares every day, everywhere they fly, and now offering low fares to Houston, Texas. 1-800-572-8255, Griffin, Georgia, Elfrida, on hold. You've been waiting a long time. Thank you for your patience. That's all right. Kind of I was enjoying Norman Clutcher. Oh, <laughs> my goodness. <laughs> all, these, all, all these old time friends. Yeah. I, I really enjoy them. And like uh, the lovely Madam Zero, I, I just don't get to hear them often enough. Yeah, I know. Um, I hate to uh, pick on John Boyd, but um, uh, Princess Diana could not have been at home with her children because they were in Scotland with Prince Charles. They were to come back to England on Sunday to be with her. Mm -hmm. But uh, she, there's no way she could have been with her children. No, I think she would. I don't think there's much question about the affection, the public affection she showed for her children. She spent a lot of time with her children. I, and I don't think now's the time to worry about a thing like no. that, you know. But the photographers have made her life, they made her life miserable. Yeah. Um, I can remember when she was first engaged to Prince Charles. There was a photographer called going in the bathroom window at the school where she was... Uh, a teacher, you know, in the kindergarten. Mm -hmm. uh, and to be so disrespectful of somebody's, n not only privacy, but, I mean, just common decency. Yeah. Uh, it, it, they were apparently, everywhere she turned around, she tripped over one of them. And she, she you know, said something about this the other week. Yeah. And, and, and you know that they had to have made her life miserable. Oh, yeah. I, wouldn't you hate to live that way where you couldn't go out to dinner? Yeah. No. Uh -huh. um, I, I wondered if you uh, heard about Newt finding the uh, dinosaur bone. No. Newt, uh, uh, I heard it last week on the news, and uh, he, he found the, I guess it's a thigh bone, 
It's a large pony. And they said he was just like a child. He was so thrilled. And yeah, you don't find dinosaur thighs every day. But let alone, I think it was in Montana that he found it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that, uh, that kind of raises a question about it. Yeah. But did, did you ever have time to read in uh, Job? Uh, I told Phil about it, and he said he would tell you. Uh, it's Job, the 40th chapter, and it begins with the 15th verse and goes through, I think, the 24th. And that is what um, uh, Adrian Rogers says is talking about the dinosaur. Okay. No, I haven't. I wrote that down. I still got it stuck yeah. away somewhere. Well, it, uh, it, calls it, it calls it by another name. But anyway, it does sound like a dinosaur. And so um, he, he could very well be right on that. I don't know. But I was so thrilled to know that Newt, Newt had found, the, the, you know, the dinosaur bone. Hey, Michael, what's it, you think you make a lamp out of that, or what can you do with the dinosaur bone? <laughs> <laughs> well, they usually have them in museums, you know. Yeah, I know, but what have I you... I don't know. Now, he's an amateur whatever. Bone finder, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what he's going to do with it. I'd like to know, but I, I, I you know... Tried to look and monitor the news real close to see if they'd tell, but yeah. they haven't told. I'm glad you called, as always. Well, I hope you have a real good uh, Labor Day, and uh, you be I'll sweet. talk to you later. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye. 1-800-572-8255. Ludlow and Phil, the Fun Seekers Radio Network, on a Labor Day. We're going to take care of some business, and then be right back. You hang on. Spartanburg, South Carolina, and Virginia on the radio. Good morning. Oh, good morning. It's almost afternoon. It's, it's, it's very close. Oh, yes, but I'm enjoying your program so much. And I said, well, and all pe you just learn so many things, and when you get to listen in half the time. But I said, yes, I'd like to tell you about a lot of things. But real thing was this 20-year-old Woodrow on that ball game yesterday, uh -huh. when he hit that thing across, and got those men in. I said, he's just young, 20 years old, I think they say. With his beautiful smile and those dimples, he's really going places. Oh. And he brought those braids right through. Yeah, he's a good one. I tell you, he is. And I just keep on enjoying it and trying to get on and everything. But I won't talk about jobs today. I like everything that you say. I love your program. And I just keep listening and everything. I love everything about it. Mm. But I'll tell you one thing, those braids, I was worried about grabbing it first. Nice night, uh -huh. you know? Yeah, but uh, I really enjoy the program. You learn a whole lot and just keep on it and everything. And uh, I said, God bless everyone today and all on this Labor Day. Yeah. And die, die, you know, the lovely lady. Yes. I said, I was sorry about all of that. You well, know? it's a terrible thing. Yes, terrible. it is. Honey, you have a good day. Okay, we well, thank you for the call. You're mighty sweet to do that. one 800 572 Eight two five five. As we go to Athens, Tennessee, and talk to George. Hello, George. Hello, Lindo. How are you, partner? Good, you? Good, buddy. Hey, I went high tech today. What'd you do, high tech? I uh, send the wife out. She bring back a computer. All right. Finally went with it. <laughs> She's been on me to get one for the kids in school, and I, I kind of feel the same way you do about it. And I had to give in, though. I finally gave in. Well, pressure, pressure, pressure. But you know, they got these assignments at school, and they have to come up with so many different resources. And yeah. uh, I tell you. They uh, really, for the kids, it's almost a must now. I know it. I know it is. About this letter. I think we can read a little bit into the intent of this letter by a key word in the letter. What's that? Winding around for a year. Yeah. I have a feeling that this person is uh, probably a guy that owns a business that's not too happy with employees right now, or he's on the urge of uh, going bankrupt. Well, somebody <laughs> somebody else said that. I don't know whether we can assume that or not, but I, I did pick out that. I thought that was a strong word, too. Yeah, because I think that shows a little bit more than just a uh, nonchalant attitude, you know. But, but That's giving lot, your hand away. Awful lot of folks do whine. Well, you know, it's true. You know, uh, I work for a company, and we're a union, and uh, the union fights for everything we can get, and, and the company comes back. It's a big company, and they come back, and they try to fight for everything they don't have to give. It's back and forth. But, you know, we, we do pretty well. But there's a lot of companies out there, they're hardly paying their workers anything. They don't have any kind of rep representation, and uh, they're pretty much at the mercy, mercy of their employers. No, not in this country. Well... Go do something else. Well, that's true, but, 
I don't know. But, you know, one thing that I would like to bring up is, you know, the CEOs and the presidents of these big corporations, they make, I don't know, 20 to 30 times what the average laborer makes, the average worker in their company. Yep. Now, in some of these foreign countries, you know, Japan and other places, they make two, three, maybe four times what they make. They're in touch with what their workers make. Uh, you know, the way these big corporations are, I don't know, I think uh, the working man needs to stand up for himself a little bit more. Why do they pay him so much? I, I guess uh, they just make a lot of profits and, and they're just taking it out of the okay, CEOs. Let, okay, let, let me tell you why. Here's the way capitalism works. Well, we can like this or not, but here's the way it works. You can share in the wealth in direct proportion with your ability to produce it. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. And there are no exceptions to that. that well, uh, not everybody that works in uh, assembly line work or whatever has that opportunity to share in the wealth. And, and they're pretty much what the company wants to throw down to you. I mean, you work have, on commission. They, if have you work, le they have less opportunity than the guy that's got the job. How do they have that less opportunity? Well, I'm not saying they don't have the opportunity, but they're fixed into a fixed wage. They don't have a, they're not a commission. They're not piecework. They're not go out and, you know, I, shake the bushes and let it come down. I understand. And I'd like for them all to be rich. Don't misunderstand me. Yeah. Including me and you. Especially me and you. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm a hard, good old conservative Republican. I got you. I got you. <laughs> Listen, I'd like to talk to you about an hour sometime. You take care of yourself. All right, we'll see. All right, buddy, got to get out of here. Had a good time. Hope you have. We're going to be right back with you tomorrow. Between now and then, you do me a favor. Whatever else you do today, you find somebody to be nice to. the best in music and in news, weather and sports, tune to WBIC, 8 and AM, Royston, Georgia. NBC Radio News.